Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve sallallahu ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve alihi tahirin. This year, in the holy month of Muharram, we would like to discuss the life of Imam al-Husayn aleyhisselam from different angles and from different perspectives. In this episode, we are going to discuss the details that occurred on the day of his birth, the day Imam Hussein was born. As you know, after his birth, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he came to the house of his daughter, Fatima al-Zahra sallamullahi alayha. And he asked them to bring Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam. But when he wanted them to bring Imam Hussein, he said, bring me my son. I want to see my son. The Prophet, he always insisted on describing them as his own son. He always described them as my sons. The Prophet insisted on calling them his own sons. Why was that? Why was he insisting on this? It was because before Islam, in the era of the Jahiliya, the Arabs, they didn't consider their daughters a member of the family. They didn't consider the children of their daughters members of their families. They only considered the boys and their descendants, one of them. They had a famous poem that said, Abna'una banu abna'ina wa banatuna awladuhunna awladu rijal al-aba'idi. Meaning that they said, only the sons of our sons are our own sons, but the sons of our daughters, they are not our sons. They are the sons of other men. Because they didn't attribute the grandsons from their daughter's side to themselves. So this, by this uh, description, Rasulullah, he wanted to change this norm, to change this law by the Arabs from the time of Jahiliyyah. He insisted on claiming that his grandsons from his daughter's side are his own sons so that the Muslims will, will learn that your daughters are from your family and their children and their descendants are also members of that family. So you could see that if, for example, if your mother is a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and your father is not, your father is not a Sayyid, is not a descendant from the Prophet. You are a descendant of the Prophet. You are one of the children of the Prophet Muhammad, even though your father is not a Sayyid and is not a descendant, because the children of the daughter are also descendants of that person. Although you won't be a Sayyid or Sayyidah, because Siyada is something that comes from the father's side. It's a privilege that only is given to you by your father. And you can't be given this privilege by your mother. But the son, being a son of the prophet or being a daughter of the prophet is also a privilege, but it's completely different from Siyada. Siyada being a Sayyid is general. You can be a Sayyid and you may not be a descendant of the Prophet. Like, for instance, the sons of uh, Imam Ali from his other wives, like Abbas, Abu al-Fadl Abbas, he was a Sayyid, but he wasn't uh, a descendant of the Prophet. Or you see Bani Abbas, the rulers, the, the caliphs, they were all Sayyids, but they weren't 
the sons and daughters of the Prophet. So being a Sayyid is completely different from being a child of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So as you can see, Imam Hussein Alayhi Salam, he was a Sayyid and he was also the son of the Prophet Muhammad, but his siyada was from his father's side. His siyada came from his father, not by the Prophet. This is something many people don't know about. They get confused. They think that Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein were Sayyids because they were the grandchildren of the Prophet. No, that's wrong. They were Sayyids because they were the sons of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And everyone from the, that is a descendant of Hashim is a Sayyid. So their siyada wasn't from the Prophet. But they were the sons of the Prophet because of their mother. The mother was the daughter of the Prophet. So you could be a son or a daughter of the Prophet without being a Sayyid. So uh, we were talking about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. When he was born, the Prophet said, bring me my son. And he insisted on this, always calling them my own sons. And he took Imam Hussein in his arms and he started reciting the adhan in his right ear. And then he recited the iqama in his left ear. As you know, this is recommended and it's mustahab for every Muslim. When they are born, the, the adhan should be recited in their right ear and the iqama should be recited in their left ear. This is a recommended and mustahab act that we learned from the Prophet and he recommended it. And then they wrapped Imam Hussein alayhi salam in white clothes. This is also mustahab and it is also recommended to do so. So Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he was in the arms of the Prophet and the Prophet was happy. But suddenly the Prophet, he began to cry. He began to weep and his tears were coming down his cheeks. And everyone, they were surprised. They didn't know why the Prophet was crying. Usually the family members are happy when a newborn comes to the family. But why was the Prophet crying? This was an important event that the Prophet had to inform the others about it, which we will do so insha'Allah. السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين On the day Imam Hussein alayhi salam was born, two different incidents happened. Two different emotional feelings. One was happiness and the other was sadness. The Prophet and all the other members of the family, they were happy for the newborn. But suddenly they saw the Prophet crying and weeping. They were confused. They asked, Ya Rasulullah, why are you crying? Is anything wrong with this baby? Why are you sad? So the Prophet wasallam, he answered, I am crying for my son Hussein because 
I am seeing in the future after my death. I foresaw that he will be killed. I foresaw that he will be butchered by people that claim to be my followers, by people that seek my forgiveness and seek my intercession on the day of judgment. But they will not receive my intercession on the day of judgment. So the Prophet was informing them that Imam Hussain will be martyred maybe 57 years later. He was informed by Gabriel, the angel, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was informing his parents that your son will be martyred many years later. And he was crying for the martyrdom and tragedy of Ashura, even though it didn't occur yet. It didn't happen yet. So why was he crying? Because the tragedy was so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was informing his prophets before the incident happened. When people ask us, you Shia, why is it that you cry and weep for Imam Hussein after 1400 years? It's been so many times that has been passed after the tragedy of Ashura. And every year in the time of Muharram, we see you lamenting and crying and reciting eulogy and doing all sorts of things for Imam Hussein. Why is it after all this time you're doing this? Well, one of the answers is that don't be surprised when we are weeping and crying for Imam Hussein after all these years. What is more surprising is that people are crying for Imam Hussein before his death, before the tragedy of Ashura, that is more surprising. When you see 70, 57 years before Ashura, the Prophet was crying for the death of Imam Hussein and the tragedy of Ashura. After that, Amir al muminin he had in one incident narration say that he too was crying for the death of Imam Hussein before it happened. Narrations say that Imam Ali alayhi salam was going to Sifin and on the way he stopped by the land of Karbala and he rested for a while in that land. He slept in the lap, he put his head in the lap of his son Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba alayhi salam and he slept for a few moment, moments and minutes but suddenly he woke up crying. They asked, Why are you crying, O oh Father, Ya Abata? Why? What happened? What did you see in your dream? Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, he, he replied that I saw this land, the land of Karbala. I saw it a sea of blood. In, and in the middle of that sea of blood, I could see my son Hussein. He was drowning in that sea of blood. And he was foretelling the tragedy of Ashura. He saw it in his dream. Then he turned to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. He said, Ya Aba Abdullah, what will you do on that day when this happens in this place? How will, will you confront this tragedy, the tragedy of Ashura? Imam Hussain answered, I will be patient, O Father. Sa'asbir, I will be patient. So the tragedy of Imam Hussain was foretold before it happened by Amir al muminin by Imam Hassan, by the Prophet, and prophets before our Prophet Muhammad. We have narrations that most of the prophets, they were foretold about Karbala. Because it was a very important matter. It was a very important tragedy. Allah was trying to tell all his prophets about this matter that is going to happen on the 61st year of Hijrah. So in narrations we see that 
from the first prophet, Nabi Adam alayhi salam, Allah told him about Karbala. And he recited the tragedy of Imam Hussein. And Adam, the first prophet, the first man on earth, he started to cry for Imam Hussein. After Adam alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam, Allah informed Nuh about the tragedy of Karbala. And Nuh began to cry for Imam Hussein alayhi salam thousands of years before Ashura happened. Then Musa Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was informed about Karbala. He was on his horse riding, crossing the land of Karbala when suddenly his horse threw him on the ground and he broke his head and blood started coming on his face and he was surprised. He said, Oh Allah, have I sinned? Have I done anything? What have I done in order to this to happen to me? In order for this to happen, was it a sin I did? Gabriel descended and said, Oh Ibrahim, you haven't done anything, but this is the land of Karbala. This is where your grandson, Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, the grandson of the last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he will be martyred in this land. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you, wants your blood to be spilt on this land where Hussein's blood will be split, spilt. So Ibrahim alayhi salam was informed about Karbala thousands of years before Ashura. Then Musa alayhi salam was informed about Ashura. And some of the details about Karbala were described for Musa in that narration where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Musa, their children will die from thirst. The, the tragedy of the thirst of Imam Hussein and the children and the companions. Musa was informed about some details about Karbala, like the thirst they will be, they will be seeing on that day. And then the Prophet Isa and Jesus, he too was informed about Karbala. So every prophet that came before Ashura was informed about Karbala. And they cried for Imam Hussein because Allah wanted to emphasize this tragedy, wanted to show them how important it is. So it's no wonder why us Shia, after 400, 1400 years, we are still lamenting and crying for Imam Hussein alayhi salam because it happened thousands of years before the incident occurred. So the Prophet, he held Imam Hussein in his arms and he cried for Imam Hussein's tragedy. And then he said to Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam, Ya Ali, what did you name my son? Again, the Prophet insists on calling him my son. He didn't say, What did you name your son? He said, What did you name my son? Picking a name for our children is a very important matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to pick names that have good meanings, proper names, not something that sounds cool or sounds nice or is a norm today. No, names should have good meanings, especially when it comes to the imams and the prophets. When it came to Imam Hussein and Imam Hassan alayhi salam, Amir al muminin he didn't pick a name for them. He said, they are the grandsons of the Prophet and he should name them. So when the Prophet asked, what did you name my son? Amir al muminin replied, I will never name them before you do. So the Prophet said, and I will not name them before my Lord does. This isn't an ordinary child. Even the Prophet himself wouldn't pick a name for Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He said that this child has to be named by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. He has to pick a name for this child because he is not an ordinary child. He's a very special child. 
So uh, the prophet, he waited for Gabriel to descend. And Gabriel descended and said, O Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his salams and his salutations to you. And he says, name your grandson the same name as Harun's son. Because Ali ibn Abi Talib to you is the same that Harun was to Musa alayhi salam. So you should name your sons the same names of Harun's sons, the brother of Musa alayhi salam. The Prophet asked, what are the names of the sons of Harun? Gabriel answered, their names were Shabar and Shubair. So the Prophet, he named his first grandson, Imam Hassan, Shabar, and uh, which will, was translated to Arabic in Hassan. And he named Imam Hussein, his second grandson, the name of Shubair, which was translated to Arabic as Hussein. So the name of Imam Hussein was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. And that shows how important this person was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.